Hi, I'm Chelsea and this is Tony and today we're doing a video on abstract photography using long exposures. Oh, you need the Osprey? Ah, that's an Osprey. Come on, Tone. I love this photography project for a few reasons. First of all, I love that it's abstract and it looks great, but it also doesn't require a lot of expensive gear and it's really fun to do. So you really just need any old body, a camera and a neutral density filter. And because image quality isn't super important, it doesn't have to be the latest and the greatest gear. Um, taking the picture itself is easy too because it just requires a few easy steps. First, you need to put your, uh, your neutral density filter on. Then you need to use a long exposure, like two to four seconds, depending on how bright it is. And uh, you wanna use a low ISO so that you don't have a ton of noise in your picture. And then once your shutter's open, you just paint with your camera to give that smooth effect. Now, the difficult parts of taking these pictures is that you have to find a good subject. I found that things with banded colors work really well, simple compositions work well. And the other difficult part is that you have to really get used to how to shake the camera to get it to look nice and smooth. So I'm gonna take a few test shots and then I'll go over my techniques more and show you what works for me. So there are a few different ways that you can move the camera and I found that going with the natural lines in the photo is what works best. So here the natural lines are horizontal because I'm taking shots of a horizon. So if I move my camera vertically when I'm taking the shot, it's just gonna blur all of the picture, all of the colors together. So you want to go with the lines in the shot. The next problem is that if you're not pretty steady about moving your camera, then all of your straight lines are going to swing or be unlevel. Another problem you might run into is that your picture might not be smoothly blurred. So some pictures look better if you shake the camera, small shakes. You can do small circles, you can do large sweeping movements, but I found that just keeping my body relatively still and using it as a tripod and moving my whole body rather than my hands lets me pan a lot smoother. You'll have to try it out and see what works for you and uh, just see what your style is. I like this spot because from where I am, I can see the green grass in the front, the blue background of the water, and then the lighter blue sky as well as this tree here. So I have colors in layers and all the details are gonna disappear when I pan to the left now. Because it's so bright here and this camera's base ISO is 200, I can only get down to a shutter speed of about 1 30th of a second, even at F22, even with my ND filter. But if I whip my hand, if I move it real fast while taking the picture, I can still get plenty of motion. To erase some of those details, I also defocus the lens, so it's way out of focus, but it ends up looking pretty good. I like the results. So I like the horizontal lines of the ocean here, but I'm finding a, I have a problem if I take a picture and I use my wrist, then it ends up all kind of tilty. And so what I decided to do is kind of go with like a golf swing, like put my elbows in and rotate my whole body. And that seems to let me keep those horizontal lines level. Chelsea was smart, she got a 64X filter. I have a stupid ND4 filter here and it's not cutting the light enough. So even at F22, the max aperture, even at the lowest ISO, ISO 200, I'm still at 1 60th of a second. I'm making it work. I'm just moving real, real quick. I'm starting the motion before I hit the shutter. So I'm moving, pressing the shutter all in one motion. That way I'm getting as much motion out of the camera as I possibly can. But. You can't get a too powerful ND filter for this kind of stuff, so just get the most serious ND filter you can find. Lenses have different filter sizes, so you have to make sure that you buy an ND filter that matches the front of your lens. You'll see it written down there with like a Greek symbol. This one's 37 millimeters, so I can only use it on 37 millimeter lenses. <laughs> okay, that's a good idea.
If I'm gonna meter for this thing, I'm gonna have to uh, put my ND filter over my meter. I usually use my phone. I have a light meter app for my phone. So I'll just set the f-stop to that of the lens, the highest f-stop number, the ISO to the ISO of the film, 100. And then I'm gonna hold my ND filter over my phone sensor and let it meter it. All right, looks like I'm at about uh, 1 8 That should be enough for me to get some blur. Take out the dark slide. Can't see anything through this viewfinder. Oh, there we go. All right, it's a Polaroid, so I gotta get it right the first time. Now we have to wait 90 seconds. Is it beautiful? It's all black. Underexposed. My app lied to me. It clearly wasn't right. I'm just gonna have to guess and give it like another three stops. <laughs> Oh, I have a full second to work with now, so I can go slower. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. I think it might still be a bit underexposed. That seems like a lot of exposure though. What, were you, what was your shutter speeds at with that ND filter? Three seconds. Oh, three seconds. And wow. F22, oh. ISO 64. And yours was ISO what? ISO 100. So maybe you have to go to all the way down to F like 16 or 11? Yeah, maybe. Uh, around Christmas time, you'll see a lot of these sort of silly Christmas tree shots where someone will zoom in and you'll see the Christmas lights have this kind of streak effect. So I just kind of emulated that with this D3300, just pointed it at some trees and uh, a couple buildings over there and thought it turned out all right. Maybe not as pretty as Chelsea's photos, but it was just something different. <laughs>